Hi, it's 8 o'clock. It's time to get started with the Facebook Live with Randy. I'm Randy. All right. So, since we're recording, and by now, if you have been watching my Facebook Live for a little while, you know that this is going to be on YouTube starting from the beginning. So, I need to act like I know. So, as we're starting to get people to come in, say hi in the comments below. If you're new, I definitely want to know that you're here. So, say hi to me below and I'll give you a shout out for being here. I really, really appreciate everybody who joins me live because you give me energy. If I was just sitting here and talking to a camera, it's like I'm talking to myself. But if I know that I have an audience and I know who the audience is and we start talking about whether you're planning a wedding or a special event then that gives me motivation to keep on going and it gets to be a lot more exciting when it's interactive. So um, there is a little bit of a delay between the time that you post your comment and the time that I see it. So if I just seem to be talking on and on and on and not answering your question, please be patient because I will get to it as soon as I see it. Like I'll really just stop what I'm talking about. And I'll say, hey, I see a comment from so-and-so and read it and answer your question. So definitely make sure that you're participating down there below. So for anybody who has not already been introduced to me, I am Randy Martin, the Chief Event Planner at Trilogy Event Design. We're located in Hatboro, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia, really close to Willow Grove Mall for those of you who are local. And I know that all of you know where the malls are. Um, so that's a great way for me to pinpoint our landmarks there. So we're about 10 minutes from Willow Grove Mall in Hatboro, Pennsylvania on York Road. I plan weddings and special events in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Currently, I'm thinking about branching out to some other areas um, a little outside of our 50-mile radius. I do also do destination weddings. So if you're having a wedding that is somewhere else, like at the Jersey Shore or... Miami, Puerto Rico, um, Colorado, wherever, I'll travel to your wedding, so don't worry. I can still help you. And today we're giving free advice on how to plan your wedding or special event. So it doesn't even matter if you're getting married in Alaska. I can help you today. So please be sure to post in the comments below. You Say hi to me so that I can say hi back. We can get started with questions as soon as you feel comfortable enough to start posting them. Um, some other things that I want to mention, it is August 1st. The summer is almost over. Amazing. It seems like it was just um, snowing like a week ago. So summer is almost over. We only have one more month left. Hey, Brianna, thanks for being here again. I really do appreciate you. Um, yeah, so summer's almost over where did it go we've had a lot of summer weddings we have a lot more fall weddings we have birthday parties um, coming up soon we have a surprise birthday party for a special young man and we have a, um, a 50th birthday party for a very eccentric woman who wants all kinds of stuff for her birthday party it's gonna be so much fun um, then we have bridal shows that are coming up. Who has been to a, one of our bridal shows before? So I speak at the bridal event by Boucher Productions. There's usually one practically every Sunday somewhere within the tri-state area, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware. Um, I am the featured speaker there talking about all of the things that I'm talking to you about today. Uh, that actually inspired this Facebook Live series because we're on a hiatus for the summer. But I love having the interaction with the couples who are getting married, who have questions and need help. So I started doing the Facebook Live actually last summer while we were on hiatus. And I reintroduced it this summer so that I can answer questions. So post your questions in the comments. And when I see them, I will answer them. We're talking about weddings and special events today not just weddings. So if you're planning an anniversary, a um, maybe even a class reunion or some other big event like that, post your questions. I'm here. Um, I 
originally wanted to kind of talk today about something um, related to how to make your wedding stand out or how to make your special event stand out and be special and unique and um, really personalized to you. But I was at a conference today. I actually drove back. I was two hours away. I drove back and wanted to make sure that I was back home in time for our Facebook Live today. So I was at a conference, a women's conference, and one of the topics of discussion was stress. And I said, you know what? Who's more stressed out than a bride when she's planning her wedding? So that's something we can talk about today, too. Let's talk about stress. What are the things that are making you stressed out? What are the things that are giving you the most anxiety about planning your wedding? Is it people? Are there specific people that are stressing you out? Is it because there are so many people with opinions that are coming at you in all different directions? Is it the cost of the wedding? Is it trying to make sure that both you and your fiance are represented in the wedding? So it's not just all about you, but it's also about them too. These are the types of things that I want to talk about today. And I want to talk about how you can relieve some of the stress, how you can eliminate some of the stress, um, what to say to the people who are making you feel like they think their opinion about your wedding is more important than what you want your wedding to be like, um, all that kind of stuff. So again, if you have questions, even if it's not on this topic, post them in the comments below because we're here right now so that I can answer your questions. But while I'm waiting to see the questions, I'm going to talk about stress. Okay, so um, one of the things that I did because I was going to this conference and it was two hours away, I actually stayed overnight at the hotel that was hosting the conference just so that I wasn't going to be racing down the turnpike to get to this conference and running in the door and then trying to plop into my seat and like leaving really early in the morning and I don't like to feel rushed. So I stayed overnight the night before, last night, and that way I was able to wake up when I wanted to, take my time getting ready, getting dressed, having my coffee and all of that. And then all I had to do was walk down the hallway to where the conference was. So that was like really, really important to me. I also took some time to be alone by myself. Uh, I think most women can understand how important it is to have some me time. So, um, you know, I'm married and I have two children and a cat and a house and I run a business and, um, you know, my business also includes other responsibilities like teaching other wedding planners at Temple University and those classes are coming up next month. So I'm looking at that schedule and trying to plan my lesson plans for that and then my speaking engagements and then the weddings and birthdays and, you know, my client activities. So sometimes it gets a little bit overwhelming to just do my regular day to day. So the time that I took away last night was really like for me to literally Netflix and chill. Because y'all, do y'all know Orange is the New Black is back? Yeah, so I was able to get some work done once I got there. I got some work done for a couple hours and then I shut it down. And I turned on Netflix and I was, you know in prison with the girls <laughs> for for a few more hours you know i had time just to do something for me so that's what i want you to do while you're planning your wedding because realistically planning your wedding is like taking on another job it's it's full time it takes it takes professionals uh, about 200 hours to plan a wedding so you not being a professional and have not really knowing where to go for the resources that you need or who the best vendors are and so you're doing research about that or trying to drive yourself crazy on Pinterest looking at all the different ideas and you know falling in love with everything and not being able to make decisions that is very taxing on your mind. It is very time consuming. You probably already have a full time job or you're in school full time. So when are you supposed to spend 200 hours to plan your wedding? 
And again, that's if you're a professional. If you're not a professional and you don't know what you don't know, it's going to take you way more than 200 hours to plan your wedding. So when when do you have this time? So if you look at your schedule and you try to fit this in, you find that you're awake till 3 o'clock in the morning Googling and like reading blogs or looking at pictures and all that kind of stuff. So planning your wedding is stressful. And if you're not stressed out, you are a unicorn. And right now I should be the only unicorn here. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's not unusual for you to be stressed out about planning your wedding. Don't feel like you're not getting it or that you're not capable or that you're, you know, you're the only one who's overwhelmed. Most brides and grooms and, you know, couples in general have never planned a wedding before. So how are you supposed to know how to do this the right way? So don't feel bad about being stressed out, but be smart about not staying stressed out. So the reason I was telling you about my night away last night is because you need to take a break from planning your wedding at least one day a month. If you can do two days a month, do two days, do every other weekend or something like that. Plan some time with your fiance to go out, have a date night, go out and do something that is not related to planning your wedding and do not talk about planning your wedding just remember why you're getting married to this person in the first place have fun together be romantic enjoy each other's company so that's that's tip number one for staying um stress free or i should say stress less because i can't tell you that you're not going to be stressed but less stressed is is the key so take some time to just to take a break, separate yourself from the things that are overwhelming, whether it's the people or the money or just the, the planning itself. Um, it doesn't get better as you get closer to the date. I think most people get more anxious as they get closer to the date. So be mindful of those stress triggers. You know, make sure that you're making time to separate yourself. Okay, so that was my first tip. My second tip is related to the people who have opinions who are not contributing to the financial cost of planning your wedding. Can I say that again? There are people who have opinions about planning your wedding, but they're not donating to the fund. So they think that you should have blinged out everything and tall centerpieces with lush gardens of flowers throughout your wedding venue. They think that you should have the um, eight-piece band as opposed to a DJ. They think that the place where you're having your wedding should be a different place altogether. So maybe you're having your wedding at, um, I'll just pick a place. You're having your wedding at Alverthorpe Manor in Abington beautiful place but they think that you should be having your wedding at the ballroom at the Ben in Center City totally different price range okay so yeah that sounds well and good but they're not giving you the money that it's going to cost to move your wedding to that other place so a few things that you can say to them depending on who it is so some people like if it's your friends who aren't even bridesmaids or anything in your wedding but they're they're potential guests to your wedding you can say, thanks for your opinion, but it's my wedding and it's not about you. Straight up. I mean, that depends on how you talk to your friends. Like, are they going to feel some kind of way that you're being sassy? I'm sassy all the time. So my friends already know it's not about you, boo. <laughs> okay. So another way that you can say it that's not so sassy and a little bit more tactful and perhaps will go over with a wider range of people you can say to them that you will take their opinion into consideration, but you're going to talk to your fiance about it first. Okay, so here's two things that you're telling them. I am not the only person who's getting married. It's not just my decision. My fiance also has a say in this. I appreciate you for thinking enough of us that you want to give us some advice or you want to offer your opinion regarding our wedding. But it's not ultimately up to me alone, so I am now going to take this a little further, and I'm going to talk to my fiancé, who is an equal partner in this relationship and in this wedding. 
So what happens here is that this person is going to say, oh, thank you. I, I'm glad that you appreciate my opinion. And then they know that it's not up to you, so they won't bug you about it for eternity. Now, they may ask you again at some point, what did your fiancé think of my opinion? But you can probably blame it on your fiancé if that their opinion is not something that you really want to consider. Like, maybe they don't think that your, your color choices are the best. And they offer their opinion on different color choices. And you can say, my fiancé doesn't like that color at all, so he said no. Or she said no. Done. What are they going to do? Okay, so that's that's a really great way to get people to leave you alone. Like, pass it on to somebody else's responsibility for the ultimate decision. Um, then there are the people who are contributing money, like your parents or his parents or um, your rich uncle or somebody. <laughs> There's other people who may be contributing to your wedding fund. And in that case, what I advise most of my clients to do is to designate where that money is going so that they do not have a say in every part of the wedding just because they're contributing some of the money for your wedding. So let's just say your wedding is $25,000 total and they're contributing $2,000. Well, hey, Uncle Jim, thank you so much for your contribution. We're going to have that go towards the entertainment. Or, Grandmom, thank you so much for your contribution. I know that you love flowers, so let's go pick out flowers together. Grandmom can be a part of your floral choices. You can have her go with you to see the florist and have her talk to the florist about flowers because Grandmom knows everything that there is to know about flowers and maybe you don't know anything about flowers. So she would be a valuable asset in those meetings and because she's paying for it, she'll understand where her money is going. She's not going to say anything to you about the entertainment or to about the food or the invitations because her money is going towards the flowers and you have made her a part of that conversation. Do you see how that goes where you show the person not just that you appreciate their contribution, but you actually value their opinion enough to include them in that decision, but only that one? Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any questions pop up yet. I really want to see your questions. So I know that my conversation is riveting and it's valuable information and you are getting so much out of it and you're probably taking notes and that's why you're not typing your questions in. But I'm here tonight to answer your questions about planning your wedding or special event. So please, please, please post them in the comments below so that I am giving you the help that you want to have. And I can show you how much I appreciate your attendance during this live. Um, for those who are watching this in the replay, they may also benefit from your questions because there's a lot of things that I know. But I'm not sure where you need help. But somebody else may also need the same help. They may also have the same questions that you have. Um, a lot of times I'm giving information and there are people who say, oh, that makes that's common sense. But no, it's not because everybody doesn't know this already. So I don't want to assume that you already know things and therefore I'm not giving you that information. But I also don't want to assume that you don't know anything. Does that make sense? All right, so please ask your questions in the comments below. We only have about 10 minutes left, so I want to make sure that we hit your questions. And if anybody has signed on that wants a shout out, just say, hey, Randy, below, because I can't actually see who's here. Um, yeah, I can't see who's here. I can only see the number of people who are here. So if you don't say anything, I can't say hey back. I really want to say hey. Hey. Okay, so um, some other things that I know cause stress. Um, I talked before about bridesmaids and how choosing the right bridesmaid makes the world a difference or choosing the right person in your life to be a bridesmaid makes a difference because you want to have those people who are going to be very supportive to you, especially during these stressful times like where do you think a bridezilla comes from? A bridezilla is grown out of stress. The bride is not naturally an evil witch. 
she's stressed out and like doesn't know how to control her emotions by the point that she becomes a bridezilla so if you choose people to be in your wedding who are going to support you and help you and guide you and you know hold you down when stuff starts to go crazy you won't get to the point where you become a bridezilla so definitely make sure that you have the support that you need and if by some chance you don't have people who know everything that there is to know about a wedding talk to me I know everything <laughs> Hi, Deb. How are you? Oh, you're so welcome for the help. Thank you for being here. Um, definitely continue to ask me questions because, like I said, I know a lot. I've been planning weddings for a really, really long time. And as I've told you before, I have been teaching other wedding planners how to do what I do. So, yeah, I know some things. I know things. All right. So... This weekend, I'm starting to look at bridesmaids' dresses. Any helpful tips before I start looking? Um, yes, so definitely consider your bridesmaids' styles. Like, how do they dress every day? If you have a bridesmaid who does not like her shoulders to be shown, or she doesn't love her legs, take those things into consideration. So when you're picking out the dresses, maybe you're not going to have strapless dresses or halter dresses, um, or, you know, those are for the ones that don't like their shoulders. Or maybe you have the girls who are very busty and need more support. You definitely don't want a strapless dress for them because they're going to constantly be tugging at it. Um, so yeah, think about how people dress normally how they have dressed in the past when you've gone out where they needed to be dressy. You also want to make sure that they are comfortable in the style that you're picking. If you have girls who are different styles or different sizes, um, you know, don't have all of the girls dressed in the same dress that the most petite girl is wearing because some of your bigger bridesmaids may not feel comfortable in that and vice versa don't have the little petite girl wearing the same dress that one of the bigger girls is wearing because she, it'll swallow her up um you're planning to let them pick their own style okay that's good so you still need to dictate some things about it because you don't want there to be such a wide range of dresses um like maybe you'll pick that they all have the same bottom style so the skirt of the dress is the same and then you'll give them the choice of two or three tops so maybe some of them will have a halter some of them will have spaghetti straps some of them may have a off the shoulder whatever styles you like for your bridesmaids based on the style of your wedding pick two or three styles for them to choose from so that the sky is not the limit and they're not overwhelmed by the choices and then they start to pick things that you don't like at all um, you still need to be in control of that. Yes, Christina, I agree. Pick a color and let the girls pick their own style. Um, again, you still want to limit the choices for them. But um, I actually did that for my own wedding. I told the girls, I, I gave them the option. I said, you can either wear all the same color but different styles or you can wear the same style in different colors. And I gave them options of the colors that they could choose from or the styles that they can choose from. Who knew that my bridesmaids would pick all the same dress? They all wanted to wear the same dress. So lucky me, <laughs> right? I didn't have a whole lot of, you know, confusion going on. But I gave them the option because I wanted them to be comfortable in whatever they chose. Um, the very first wedding that I planned had a lot of bridesmaids. It was actually 30 people in their wedding party total. So maybe about 14 bridesmaids. Um... And they all had the choice of what top they were going to wear. They had custom made dresses. So the bottom of the dress was the same shape, but the top of the dress was whatever they chose. And each one of those 14 girls had a different style top, which was amazing. But because it was custom made, it made it really easy for the designer and for the bride. And the bridesmaids all felt comfortable in the top that was fitted to their body shape. 
um, what are my thoughts on two colors instead of all one color? It really depends on the style of your wedding. So if you're having a very formal wedding, I would say that being colorful is not going to be the best option unless you have like your maid of honor or your matron of honor wears a different shade of the same color that the rest of the girls are wearing. But if it's a semi-formal or informal wedding, then yeah, you can go ahead with two different colors. I think that they need to be in the same family so that it doesn't look like they are not at the same event. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, what else about bridesmaids dresses or any other thing that is kind of stressing you out? And Christina, I didn't give you a shout out. Thank you for your comment. Hey, hey girl, <laughs> thank you for being here. Um, yeah, what other questions or comments about the bridesmaids dresses the um because there this is an interactive conversation i am absolutely open to the rest of you answering some of the questions as well or commenting on the questions because it gives different perspectives and it's not all just like me the expert answering the questions there are others of you there that also have some experience maybe you've already gotten past this point where um, the person asking the question is and since you recently experienced it you can give some advice or tips or share your own experience so you're welcome to do that in the comments too you're also looking at good places to look at dresses um, okay so a few places that I really like um, there's La Bella Donna which is located in Jenkintown and I think they opened their second location recently in Ben Salem I think it's in Ben Salem, but you can Google La Bella Donna. And then there's also Nicole Bridal. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, very beautiful dresses. I think that their wedding gowns are gorgeous, but their, um, their evening wear and their bridesmaids dresses are also very, very beautiful pretty so you know if you're looking for something that is sleek and sophisticated i would say go to nicole um there's also claire's um they're located in delaware i believe but they have all different kinds and if you want something that's um a little bit more contemporary like sequined or sparkly or some other you know more modern Hollywood glam style, I would say that they're a good choice. Jan's Boutique, Jan, like Marsha's sister on the Brady Bunch, so it's Jan's Boutique. They also have really, really beautiful special occasion wear. So I think that was four that I just gave you. I don't wanna give you too many. So start with those. And then if you don't find anything that you really, really love, come back and we'll talk about it again. Um, there's a lot of them out there. I think that it might be helpful if you start out just thinking about the look that you're going for so that you know what you're, um, what you're going to be shopping for. You can contact the, the stores and ask them if they carry that style before you even go. I do also think that it's super important that the bride goes with at least two bridesmaids that are not the same size or shape to go and pick out the dresses don't if you have a large bridal party don't take everybody at first take just two so that they can pick it out and then you tell the rest of the bridesmaids what their options are based on these two bridesmaids decisions um, that way it's easier for you to make some selections without having everybody trying things on and everybody having an opinion and I don't like this I hate this and you know it just becomes a bad shopping experience um you're welcome okay so we're almost out of time uh I again I really really appreciate you for being here I love having an audience to talk to and questions to answer again I don't want to just sit here and talk to myself I want to answer your questions so we'll be back again um, next Wednesday at 8 o'clock and in the meantime if there's anything that you have other questions about I do invite you to have um, a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me if it's your first time meeting with me it would be an initial meeting for 30 minutes it could either be in person at my studio in Hatboro 
or it can be on the phone or a video chat. Um, if you have met with me before and you just want some more time with me, then you can schedule a one hour consultation with me, which is different than the initial meeting. So the things that we'll talk about would be a little bit different because I already have notes from our last meeting and I can catch up and, you know, we can talk about the things of where you are right now in planning. So um, go to TrilogyEventDesign.com. There's a link that says schedule consultation. It's like at the bottom of the home page. You just click it. You can see my whole calendar. Actually, you can see my calendar for the next 30 days because I don't want you to schedule an appointment with me in December um, right now in August. But you can see my calendar. You can see when I'm available for the type of appointment that you want. Um, and then you schedule it based on your own availability. So it's no, none of that going back and forth. You know, I'm available on this day, but I'm not available on this day. Well, how about this day? No, that doesn't work for me either. You just look at it, click it, done. And I love the ease of that for any, any other business. Like my hair salon just decided to have an app for me to do the same thing. And I love it. Okay. So anyway, let me get back to what I was saying. <laughs> My videos have been recorded and posted on YouTube, so if there's any episodes that you missed or something that you just want to continue to follow, go to the Trilogy of End Design YouTube channel and you can see all of the Facebook Lives recordings um, posted there. Um, what else? I think that's it for now. You can contact me to schedule an appointment to meet with me in person. You can come back next Wednesday to watch next week's Facebook Live and please ask more questions and participate. And you can also go to the YouTube channel to see some of the past, um, past videos and get some more information. So I hope that this has been super helpful for you. If you are not already subscribed or following our Facebook page, Please make sure that you like and follow the page. Get notifications so that you can see when we go live again. Um, yeah, cool. So have a wonderful evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I hope to see you again soon. Thanks again for your questions. I'll talk to you later. Best wishes and unicorn kisses. Bye.